Let the church say amen again. Let the church say amen again. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit. 2024. Uh, it's 2024. Uh, happy New Year. And then for the second group, Happy New Year's. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll take either one, either one. We are 10 years old. So next week will be uh, our celebration of our 10 year anniversary. Um, God is simply good. Uh, he's faithful. Uh, he deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. So next week we will have service. We will do baptism. Uh, if you are saved, you've never been baptized, you want to make public that you in love um, with God, then go ahead and put a ring on it. That's what, that's what uh, baptism is. Uh, so for next week, 10 year anniversary, do what Madison did today. Bring friends. I'm assuming friends, family. My man, you're smiling. Can I get you five? Yeah, my man. What's your name? Charles. Charles. That's my name too. No, not really. <laughs> but, but do what Madison did. Bring friends next week. Uh, help them celebrate with this. I'm assuming we'll have food. But we might not. But bring them. <laughs> I should have checked that. I'm not sure. Uh, if we don't, see me. If you're hungry next week, we will feed you. Uh, I'm just the pastor. Ten years. Ten years. I didn't know you, Madison. I didn't know a lot of y'all then. So for me, I plan on coming in and getting my praise on next week. Because uh, God has been faithful. Today uh, is not a normal day. If you've been coming here, you already know what today is. It's Vision Sunday, where it's not a typical sermon. We're simply going to go over what we aspire to be, what we try our best to be, what we try to walk out. Uh, it's the first Sunday of the, of the year. And maybe you're trying to decide, you know, if this is the church for you, this is a good Sunday to come. Uh, so go ahead and get your sheets out. You can still talk back to me, even though it's Vision Sunday. I like that. Right. Yell back at me. Uh, the first thing that we want to talk about is the name of our church. The factory. I say this all the time. People, I don't get it as much now, but over the years, people have asked me, yeah, how did you come up with the name The Factory? That's one group of people. Then there's another group of people say, uh, how you, how you, the, the factory. <laughs> Same question, kind of, but people either like or they don't. Um, years ago, I, I like reading through the Bible, and I was reading through, and I got to Acts. The factory didn't exist. My wife was in our room asleep. I was in the office at home, and I was reading the book of Acts. We may walk through that book together as a church eventually. I'm sure we will. And just sitting at my desk about 10 o'clock at night, I was reading, and I was like, wow, what a church. What a New Testament church characterized by power, uh, God's power. A power that is not manipulative. Sometimes people get power, they want to manipulate, they want to step on your neck, they want to will power and, 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 and show you that they are the balls when really none of us are. But that New Testament church had power. You saw stuff that you won't see uh, at your jobs during the week. You won't, some things only the church can do. Uh, some things only God will do through his People And so I, I ran into the room and I told my wife, I said, man, look at this church. Look at this New Testament church. 
Uh, everybody knew what they were assigned to do. They knew their assignments if you were in this church. They weren't just coming to church one day a week to hear a speech and going home. They were living this thing out the other six days. I said to my wife, it's, it's like... It's like they were at a factory. You know when you work in a factory what you come to do. Uh, and when I said that, I was like, ah, dad is. Uh, if we ever plan a church, we're going to call it the factory because we don't want to be confused about what we come to do. What God did years later after I wrote this, when we were trying to build a launch team to plant the church, he allowed me to work at Shelly's husband's company um, and we worked out in, outside of Greenville, South Carolina at BMW, the BMW factory, the BMW warehouse. For 12 hours a day, I was pulling staples, and I thought that that's what my job was. I was trying to make money to plant a church, um, and God really had me there so that I could see, oh, this is why BMWs cost so much, <laughs> because that factory was run like a fine tooth comb. Uh, you, they had a cafeteria and, and the floors were so clean, you could eat off the floors. I'm not even exaggerating. It was, and you see why BMW is a different price range than uh, the stuff that I'm used to driving in. Everybody there knew what they were there to do. So when uh, a chunk of metal, hunk of metal, whatever you want to call it, came into those warehouse doors. They didn't see a hunk of metal. They saw a, a uh, X5. They saw an X6. They saw the finished products. Y'all look sleepier than the nine, and it's later, so I'm a, am I, y'all hear me? We good? <laughs> it's later. It's 11. Uh, when a chunk of metal came in, they saw the five series. They saw the three series. And so that's what we want now. When somebody comes in these doors, maybe you think her skirt is too short. We really don't have time to focus on that because we're trying to get them on the assembly line. Uh, maybe, maybe you think, uh, you know, uh, pretty sure I smell some alcohol because I've in 10 years, y'all know how much alcohol I smell right here at the factory. At the, but guess what? I'm glad y'all here. Uh, 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 what a safer place to be uh, uh, because we got some, someone here who can make you drunk. Like, uh, ho ho holy ghost. And so, so we want to see a person, not just where they at, but we want to see them where God desires them to be. You could not you could not have told me I would be a preacher. You couldn't tell me, but God had me on the assembly line. By the way, I'm still on it. I'm still getting made over. I'm still getting uh, built up. And so we want to be a church that is really, here it is at the end of the day, we don't want to be about consumerism. I hope y'all hear me. Uh, we do not want to be about consumerism. It is so important if you're new here that you get that. Um, we're not here, we're not in the placation business. Um, I'm sorry, I, 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 he might, he's probably heard this word before, but we, I'm, I'm not here to kiss butt. I'm not here to kiss your rear end. But that's got to be clear. And, and it's, I got to say that because that's what the church has become. We, we want, we want y'all to like us. Uh, we want to placate, and, and I'm, not, I'm not in the tap dance business. I'm not in. Uh, I took my wife out. Uh, we stayed in a hotel over the last couple of days out in Alpharetta, and I just wanted to be with my wife, take some time away, and we eat vegan. I don't, I don't know if you know that. I don't talk about it often, but, but we ate at a vegan restaurant in Buckhead, um, I got appetizers, them lollipop fake wings. Uh, they look like wings, though. That's what I got. I went to the restroom. My lollipop wings came back. Paid $13 for the appetizer, $13. And I, I, got, I got back to the table. I had three. You know what I mean? For 13 bucks. Um, and, uh, and then we ate. The food was really good. It was filling. Then we stayed at the hotel in uh, Avalon Place in Alpharetta. I'd recommend it. 
Uh, I made the reservations because I wanted to be a romantic like that. I went online, and instead of taking the cheaper room, I took the more expensive room because I want my wife to know what I mean. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that she got a real one. You know what I mean? I'm going to wine and dine her with this here uh, 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 Kool Aid and uh, these vegan lollipops. <laughs> and I did the reservations myself. And I knew that it gave me an option for one price, but I said, I'm not going to be cheap with my wife. And then we checked in, and we get to our room, and it's on the second floor. And the roof was outside, you know what I mean? No view. Well, I I didn't pay for a room like this. I pay, I want to see all of Alpharetta. I want to see Civil War museums and all of this. I want to see relics. I want to see everything. My point is, And then, yesterday when we were eating, my wife says, which restaurant do you prefer? Which food is better, this one or the one yesterday? Here's my point. We were acting like consumers. Uh, I was like, as soon as I get home, I'm going on Yelp. They put me on the second floor. Uh, I had three lollipop wings. I paid $700 for lunch. (laughs) And, And that's what a consumer does. And unfortunately, that's the church in America. Uh, We come and we sit back and we scrutinize and oh, shit, he don't even have a suit on. He got a track suit on and he's got orange in it. And his hair, what color is that? And that is not, that's not the church in the Bible. The church in the Bible, they ain't even got time for that foolishness. They rolling up their hands dying for God. (laughs) I hope y'all hear me. Uh, Peter and them them dudes were dying. Ladies were dying for God. They were not coming trying to get the pastor to tap dance. Matter of fact, in the book of Acts, it says one time uh, that they scattered. Everybody scattered except the apostles. Go read it. Except, so that tells me, hold on, the apostles stay in Jerusalem, but the gospel is still spreading. Guess what that tells me, Donna? Regular people were doing it. People that we call regular. Ain't none of us regular if the Holy Spirit lives in you. You ain't regular. So you don't have to have the title of pastor to go tell people what Jesus has done for you. So that's the church that we want to be. We don't want you to come here. If you're coming here and you're comfortable every week, man, we don't doing something wrong. So what is it then, let me just ask you, what is it that God has for you to do? Because in the corner here, we're about making disciples. We're about making disciples. A disciple in that first century world was a student. It still is a learner. And in that first century world, you learn by following. Who did you follow? Your rabbi. Uh, And so whatever your rabbi did, you kind of did. You watched his life. You you mocked what he did. You learned. You were a student. So that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make disciples. So you want to be asking yourself, how does that look in my life? First of all, you want to be a disciple. Uh, That means you want to, I don't know, sit in the Word. You want to sit at His feet in the morning. You want to learn about Him yourself. And then you want to find out who is it that I need to tell about Him, that I need to walk with so that they can better learn Him. that's That's what we're about. We're not about consumerism. So... Some of you can testify to this. If you come here long enough, there are going to be some times you don't feel me. There are going to be some times you don't like me. Don't shake your head too hard. (laughs) Uh, Because we're we're not trying to be in the placation business. Uh, I had a young man come to me after the first service, never seen him before. And he stood and talked to me. He said, I'm a critic. I criticize. I critique everything. He said, you've challenged me. I can't critique. He said, I've been to two churches in my life that, that, that challenged me. I, 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 want, I want y'all challenged. Everybody in this room has loved ones that don't know the Lord. Everybody. And so what are you doing about it? That's what discipleship is, telling people. Just tell them what he's done for you. That's what we want to be about. Your enthusiasm is quite overwhelming. The factory. Next, look at the mission. 
And uh, Madison, I always point you out, and I'm sorry, but you're still brave enough to sit on the front row. Man, you're always bringing people here. Yeah. And you, your family? That's awesome. Welcome. Y'all all right? <laughs> Thank y'all. But, but that's what it's about. We just baptized you a few months ago. Now you're bringing more people than I bring. That's what it's about. Jesus has been good to you. The mission. By the way, we want to do all of this stuff the other six days. I believe in Sundays. I believe in assembling together. I believe in that. But what are you doing Monday? What are you doing Tuesday? How does your Wednesday look? Is God still good to you on Wednesday? Is he still good to you on Thursday? Is he good enough to lift up? I don't know. At the jam. Is he good enough to tell your cousins them and your aunties them and your boyfriend them and then your, uh, yeah, is he, is he good enough? Is he, the other six days, the other six days. Next, let's go to the mission. When I wrote this, the factory did not exist. And I put the pronoun me in it. And I thought about it, maybe I should take it out because it seems me-centered. Well, I keep it in. Here's what I would encourage you to do, substitute your name there. Wherever you see that pronoun, just substitute yourself there. One of the reasons I keep it in, because it humbles me, because I can't do any of this. My wife and I were talking yesterday about making disciples. If you're really trying to make disciples, you don't feel worthy a lot of times. Sometimes even in your own home, it feels like, man, am I really making a difference? Whereas if you get up here to try to throw down and entertain with the sermon, you can feel good about yourself because every now and then people will clap for you, people will like you. But in the discipleship business, sometimes it seems like you're getting nowhere. And so uh, when I look at this, it just, it, it humbles me. Uh, God has called me to make disciples and teach others to make disciples the other six days. He's called me to reach out to all people. That's key for me. That's really important. All people, every race, every face. If I'm the devil, I'm so giddy about the American church uh, and her history and her present because she's so divided. White people go here, black people go here, Latin people go here, uh, and, and we just kind of pick and choose, and we tend to look alike, we tend to vote alike, we go places that we're comfortable. It seems to me that that's not what I see in Scripture. As a matter of fact, Ephesians 2 says God, uh, Jesus tore down the middle wall of separation, and even in America to this day, the church is still, is still very divided. Boy, y'all look uncomfortable whenever I talk about this. You should be used to it. Uh, we want to sit beside people. We want to do life with people that don't look like us. Uh, that uh, Think about this. Ushers, where are ushers at? Garth the doors. Garth the doors. Now, uh, you, you, you sitting beside somebody that's going to vote for Joe Biden. And somebody else, you sit beside somebody that's going to vote for Donald Trump. Sounds like a good church to me. Ah, oh, that's so good. Ah, oh, that's so good. And I'm, I'm writing my name in the ballot. If you have a pulse, if you have a pulse, we want you at the factory. We want you here. Doesn't mean that we will agree to everything. If you come here, we do expect that you will get on the assembly line. Yep. We do expect that I'm on it and I'm the pastor here. I can't do whatever I want because the assembly line comes, you know, we have instructions for how we do this thing. So if you come here and you're living a certain way and living foul, we welcome you. But chances are we're going to call stuff out over the years through scripture that's going to make you uncomfortable. All it means is you ain't supposed to get mad at the preacher. Repent. Uh, boy, y'all are quiet, my man. Shelly, amen me. Come on now. Amen. <laughs> Uh, all it means, so rather than get mad, just repent means, you know, you turn away, you change your mind. But so uh, I'm going to just be real here. If you're sleeping with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, y'all ain't married, repent. That's what it says. I know, right? If you don't like somebody because of their color of their skin, if you don't, if you don't love gay people, um, if, you don't, if you don't love straight people, it doesn't mean that we agree, but, but we ain't got no business not liking anybody. And looking down at anybody, no business. Okay. 
every race, every phase. He's called me to lead a church that is community and not corporation. I, probably every couple of months, somebody, I'll be meeting with somebody, maybe they don't go to the church, and they'll say, well, after all, the church is a business. I hear it all the time. And they mean, well, we're not. We're, 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 we're a living organism. We're, we're, we're the body. He's the head. We're the body. So I'm not the CEO. I don't stand up here talking to you today as a CEO. Uh, if you know me, you know that's actually hilarious to think that I could even be a CEO. But people, we've embraced that that's what the pastor is that every church I've worked at, I'm not criticizing at some point, there's a flow chart that goes out in a staff meeting or staff retreat, and the pastor is at the top of that flow chart, and then uh, whether it's elders or deacons underneath, and it goes all the way down to the sheep, which is y'all. When I look in scripture, the flow chart seems inverted to me. Paul, Paul told uh, the people at Corinth, he says, I'm your bondservant. I'm your bondservant. There are other times Paul says he's Jesus' bondservant. But this, this time he says, I'm your bondservant. And, and so to me, if Paul can be a bondservant, a slave, a shepherd, uh, and not a CEO, to me, that's what I'm called to be. The problem is, as a shepherd, uh, you deal with stuff. You do life in some ways that you didn't necessarily think you would have to. I'm a shepherd. 2009, I went to Africa for the first time. I tell the story every vision meeting. Uh, I was in Tanzania 16 days. The second half of my trip, we went out into what we called the bush. That's what they called it, out in the middle of nowhere. Every single day, I saw sheep. If you know me, I don't do animals. Uh, and we, a couple of times, stood in the middle of, like, the village area where every evening all the animals come in. You're talking about terrifying. They all come in, and we're standing right there, and you can see them on the horizon. Once they realize they're close, they just start running. I'm a shoe guy. I love shoes. I even would say sometimes this may be a problem. I'm trying to get better. But when I went to Africa, I didn't take my nicer shoes. And I noticed because there's, there's mess around, sheep mess. And, and I didn't want to step, you know what I mean? Like a couple of days, I'm just walking around like this, not wanting to get my shoes and sheep mess, and I don't know, I believe it was the Holy Spirit said to me, step in the mess. Uh, that's, really, that's really what a shepherd signs up for. You sign up not to walk tip and toe around crap. Um, some of us tip to around crap. You sit beside a teenager that's got so much crap in your house and you pretend that everything is good. Uh, deal with it, step in it. Step in it. So in my case, some of you can testify I've stepped in your marriage mess. Yes. Uh, some I've stepped, in, I've stepped in messes one time. I hope I don't get you in trouble. You said to me, Keith, you need a gun because I'd been counseling sessions and she could hear. And I've had people on the fight men counseling sessions. That's a good thing. Because it's mess. It's, I, 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 if we go in the office, I'm going to tell you what thus says yeah. the Lord. You're supposed to get mad yeah. sometimes, and I'm supposed to walk in it. Yeah. I, if I was a CEO, I was in a meeting. My wife was there with me, and she said, like, I've been in two or three meetings with you where people are mad at you, and they let you know it, and you just, you're taking it. I'm growing in 10 years. Sometimes I'm, I told you oh, this weekend, I want to shut up more. When y'all are mad at me, sometimes if I read an email, man, just shut up. Step in it. I'll admit that ain't easy. That ain't easy. When somebody, when somebody is mad at you in the office and you're trying to help them, but that's what I sign up for. With the CEO, you don't have to deal with that. So, so to me, we're all here to serve. That's what church is. We're all, we're all here to serve. Elders, staff, we're elder-led church. I'm not, I'm not a unilateral 
uh, uh, pastor, we, we, we serve as a team. And so if you have serious problems with me, then what you would want to do is we have a board of pastors that serve as my boss. Man, email them. Shelly can give you, seriously, she can give you their email addresses. I do have people that I'm accountable to. Uh, one of them I know for sure will be here next week. If you think that I'm not preaching the book, if you think that I'm doing things wrong, by all means, reach out to people that hold me accountable, pastors. So let's keep going. The purpose. <laughs> Our purpose. We will confront people through worship. I, I, I chose that word confront on purpose. I don't see confrontation as a bad word. Um, when I lived in Chicago and I would go get my hair cut in Evanston, Illinois, it was almost not a week that I went there to get the cut that the Nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan's people, would confront me. Bean pies, uh, newspapers, they were not ashamed early Saturday morning confronting me with the false gospel. It's false. Uh, confronting me with the gospel that says uh, white man is a blue-eyed devil, right? That's a false gospel. And so uh, uh, the Jehovah's Witness, they have no problems confronting us. I've said it before. When they come to your house, what are you doing? You in there ducking. You know. You don't want to see them. I said at the first service, man, I love for the Jehovah's Witness to come to my house. I trap them. I get them. Uh, I've had Jehovah's Witness come to my house. I've had them trying to leave, and I'm not, I can't let you go. I got you in here now. And I got to show you in your Bible, because they, lo they love to say, we got the same Bible. We don't. If you go to John chapter 1, a little G God, you call him a God. If you go to, my, my, my God is capitalized. I don't serve a little G God. And, 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 and when you do that, they trying to run from you. I, I've gone to Kingdom Hall right down the street because they invited me. I was like, why not? And, and, and then they call you and follow up. And now I get to share Jesus with them. So we want to confront people with Jesus, the greatest of all time, the one that ain't nobody like, nobody compares him. We want to confront everybody else that's coming out of the closet except us. We're going in deeper and deeper and deeper in it. So let's come out and tell people what he's done for us. We will confront people through worship the word and walking Christianity out daily. Church will be about the other six days. Again, I wrote this before the factor existed. Worship, as it pertains to worship, Sunday mornings, we want it to be presence driven. Again, I didn't know if I would have a band when I wrote this. I just wrote, I must embrace who I am as a worship leader. By the way, that doesn't mean that you're at the keyboard or you have a mic in your hand singing, but you come in here to set the tone. Uh, and so for me, you are not going to see me in an office and, until I preach, which a lot of preachers do. I'm not criticizing it. I want to come out here for the whole thing because I, I need the worship. I don't, I don't want to wait. If I haven't prayed before I got here, I, 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 don't, I don't have to sit in an office and pray first. I, I, I do that through the week. Um, but I must embrace who I am as a worship leader. I must lead people in worship initially and model it afterwards. Um, when I used to do a lot of counseling, I would ask couples when they were in my uh, office arguing, are you a thermostat or a thermometer? Which one are you? The thermometer tells the temperature. Uh, I love my dad. If you hang around me, you're going to hear me talk about him. He died a few months ago at 99 years old. He was never merely a thermometer. He was always a thermostat. So I've seen my dad go in what I would call a dead church. Everybody there was dead, and my dad would walk up in there with the spirit on him, <laughs> and he would change the temperature. People were afraid to clap before my dad had got there, and by the time my dad had finished, everybody was grooving because, because he, knew, he knew how to change the temperature. Don't wait on the worship team to change the temperature. God has been good to you. He hasn't just been good to the worship team, so 
When you come in here, come in here with the boldness that I'm going to come up in here, I'm going to get my praise on. If nobody else praises him, if nobody on my row lifts my hand, I know he's been good to me. If nobody on my row blesses him with the fruit of uh, their lips, I know he woke me up this morning. I know he put food on my table this morning. So I, I ain't going to wait on anybody else. I'm going to go ahead and set the temperature. You are, you are, uh, uh, you are deputized to do that. Set the temperature in the room. If you want to scream, scream. I don't have to tell you that. And then next, the word. This is my primary responsibility, the word. Every sermon will point listeners to Jesus. It's simple. Crucified Jesus, the buried Jesus, the resurrected, the reigning Jesus. We're going to give practical ways to apply each sermon every week. If you come here, typically I give homework. It's called sermon application. You go and look at Jesus preaching. When he preaches, he expects you to apply it. It's an expectation. Um, I'm not a mere teacher. Teachers give information. Uh, preachers expect uh, uh, transformation. They expect you to walk it out. They expect you to do it. And so each week when we give homework, write it down. Go do it. It's going to change your life. Another way that you can get in the Word is join discipleship groups. It's our small groups here. Join them. You're going you're gonna to get to chop it up with other people in the group and ask questions in the group. Maybe learn from other people that some people know the Bible so well, but they don't, they don't get on stage, and you'll be amazed how you'll be blessed by somebody else in your small group. Uh, and then we have the one-year Bible reading that uh, Dara has talked about. Dara, stand up real quick. Got to pray on her shirt. Dara is more credentialed than I am. Did y'all hear that? She's more credentialed than me. She has a Master's of Divinity, a Master's of Divinity. I, I got a G and a E and a D. I'm joking. Thank you. But Dara is kind of running the one-year Bible reading. So when you leave here, if you, you might say, well, it's seven days in. So what? Start now. Start reading the Bible. Man, you can easily catch up. Go out, go out and sign up to do the one-year Bible reading. I tell my wife all the time, the Bible has changed my life completely changed my life. I'm not who I used to be. I'm not what I want to be, but it's the Bible that's changed my life. When I, look, when I look in here and I see people whose skin is a different hue than mine, the Bible did that for me. There was a time growing up, I, I, I would have just preferred to have been in the black church, if I can be honest with you. And then I started reading the Bible. And I'm like, well, what is the black church? What, e what even is that? <laughs> uh, and then the Bible, okay, Ephesians 2, he tore down the middle wall of separation. I got that from the Bible. And, and the world that we live in is not going to bring unity. So, so you got to have the word. You got to have it. The world that we live in is going to tell you it's all right for you just to leave your spouse if they're acting crazy. The world we live in is going to say, look, if somebody clap at you, clap back at them. But the Bible doesn't do any of that because it's the standard. And so, so what we want you to do is get plugged in. Man, for the first time in some of your lives, read the Bible from cover to cover. It'll take you 15 minutes to 20 minutes a day. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's just a time off from your scrolling. Just take 20 minutes. Just take 20 minutes instead of using that to lick that same thumb and turn your pages. And, and I would even recommend get a Bible. Smell it. Ooh, y'all smell your, man, it's something about it. It changes lives. And then finally, we want to walk it out. We want to walk it out. That, that may be not, not the wisest thing to say. <laughs> uh, my bad. <laughs> I'm not going to get in trouble because everything goes online. But before, before people were rapping about it, God was talking about it. Sitting behind church walls on Sunday, 
is not it. It's not enough. Walk it out. Walk it out. Look at what we say. Serving people the other six days will be an essential part of membership. We will serve people within our local body. We don't publicize that much, uh, but we do that. We pay bills. We do things. And there are times I felt like, mm, I think this person is taking advantage of us. But that's what we sign up for. Sometimes somebody go, if you're trying to slick the church, then you've got another problem. And, and again, we sign up for that. Uh, we sign up for that. We help people within our local body. We will serve those outside of our walls as well. We do that well. We feed people in Atlanta. We feed people here. We've now partnered with the local ministry that's right, right down the street. Uh, he was here this morning, the guy that we served. So you have so many opportunities to serve the least of these. But here's the thing. Serving is really right under your nose. If you got to just serve all the time with the factory, you're still missing it. If it's got to be a church program, then you're still missing it. Uh, when you go to work tomorrow, you'll have an opportunity to serve somebody. When you're sitting uh, at your, ch your child's little league practice or little league game, you're there every day, uh, three times a week, watching little junior strike out. Uh, the person that's sitting beside you, what if they need to know Jesus? What if the person sitting beside you is on their way to a burning hell? Think about it. Just think about that. And you have the answer. If you had a million dollars for me, you would tell me. And a million dollars can't take me to heaven. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. We have Jesus Christ. We, we have Father God. And you mean you won't? You won't give him away? So, so it's not just a matter of helping people in Africa. In my mind, we're not even helping people in Africa. I've never once thought that we're doing life with them. Yeah. Um, uh, we're, we're not helping people on the street. We're trying to, we're trying to be community with them because there are things that they can teach us too. Yes. Yes. Uh, so where do we get this from? Serving the least of these I say it all the time, as long as you all let me pastor here, we're going to serve the least of these. Not because I'm generous, but because of what I read in Matthew 25. Jesus is talking, he says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations, everybody, will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd does sheep and goats. I want you to think about that. Uh, the real judge, the righteous judge, there's going to come a day that he's going to judge us. Um, should sober you, shouldn't it? He's going to judge us, uh, and he's going to judge us rightly. And it's going to determine our eternities. And the thing that baffles me, I went to Bible college and all of that stuff, not criticizing. We do it here. We do altar calls, and people come up and pray. That ain't what he's doing in the text. He's not separating you based on if you pray to prayer. I'm not against that. We do it here. He's not separating you based on, you know, if you went to enough Sunday school classes. He's separating people, sh sheep and goats, based on, hey, hold on. How did, how did you treat the least of these? Jesus. The sheep go to his right, eternal life. Oh, what a life. I can't wait. Eternal life. The goats, eternal death and eternal damnation, eternal punishment. I know that it ain't popular. I know that nowadays even preachers don't believe in hell. Until I see different in the scriptures, I, I do. Um, and I don't want anybody to go under, under my watch on my assignment. He's going to separate people eternally based on, hey, you either, when I was hungry, you either fed me or you didn't. When I was thirsty, you either gave me something to drink 
or you didn't. But God, where's the altar call? Yeah. I don't see it in there. Uh, when, when, when I was naked, you either put clothes on me or you didn't. Uh, when, I was, when I was a stranger, you either took me in or you put up a border wall. Been real. Uh, when I was when I was when when I was in prison, you either came to visit me or you didn't. Think about that, because we look down sometimes without realizing on prisoners they're guilty. Well, we missing him. He said, he said, y'all, y'all, how many times have you missed Jesus looking for a dude? Excuse my language, with a white robe on, with a glow, and he in the street. Land under the bridge, Jesus. and you're missing him. He said, I was in the hospital. You either came to visit me or you didn't. We do what we do because the Bible teaches that we treat the marginalized a certain way. We don't look down our noses at them. I'm talking soft. Have you noticed I haven't screamed today? Not sweating because I want us to get it. What do the other six days look like? If somebody has a strange smell living on the street, do you turn up your nose or do you say, man, this is an opportunity for me to be with the king of kings? So, as long as I'm here, Eric, we're going to always serve the poor. If it means our budget drops and we got to cut some other stuff, it might mean we fire you, Eric. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. But, but I might have to take a pay cut. We're going to always help the poor. We're gonna, because I, I believe Matthew 25 is true. I'm going to answer to one greater than all of y'all. And I want, him to, I want him to say, to the right, to the right. And then finally, the vision. Admittedly, I don't think we've, we're here, but we're, we're, we're better than we used to be. This is what I saw when I wrote this years ago. We will be a multiracial church. Uh, I don't ever want to go to a church unless God changes my assignment with people. All of their skin looks like mine. I just, that doesn't even make sense to me. Just doesn't. Doesn't make sense to me. Uh, You know, if me and you had gone out this weekend, say, oh, let's go to the black hotel. What? (laughs) We're going to get there late. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Laugh. <laughs> Let's eat at the black restaurant. Doesn't that sound stupid? But yet, that's how we do church. That's how we do church. That's how we do church. We would be a multiracial church, but we would be a culture of one. What do I mean? Um, uh, the world has created a construct America has where I'm considered black. You didn't get that from the Bible. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not black first. I ain't even black. Uh, I'm, I'm, the culture of one, we're all blood bought. That's the culture we're under. We're disciples. We're Christ followers. Man, uh, I'm going to get in trouble. Some of us too proud of all of this stuff. And I love, I love who I am. I'm sorry. I love my skin. I promise you I do. But man, to hell with that stuff. Y'all hear me? Y'all do hear me, right? That stuff's going to burn. Man, man, you mean to tell me Donna ain't my sister? Are you kidding me? How stupid is that? He hung on a cross. The, 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 it sounds cliche. The color we care about is red. Now, now, white people. <laughs> that doesn't mean when injustice happens, we're going to talk about yes. it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> Let me hurry up. <laughs> Y'all laugh when I said we were going to have a whole black hotel and be late. I need the white people to keep that same energy. <laughs> Yeah, when injustice happens, we need to speak up. I'm sorry to tell my white friends, I don't get treated like some of y'all when I'm stopped. I know you don't always want to hear it, but I don't. I've been mistreated a bunch of times. So we want to be real about it all because God is a God of justice. 
We want justice. We want justice for embryos. Man, I ain't planning to go here. We want to fight for people that can't fight themselves. They ain't even out yet. Boy. Lord, please send them back for the 10 year. Because the church is lost on that stuff. Because we, we ain't in this. Did y'all know he knit babies together in the womb? Anyway, atmosphere would be the key word for Sunday services. Listen to me. If you come here, it's all right to scream. It's all right to yell. It's all right to lift your hands. I ain't even mad if you just got to run. I ain't mad, man. I grew up, I've seen all of that because God is that good. I mean, we run for everything else. We make a fool out of it. How many women, how many men have you made a fool of yourself for? Men, how many women have you bought gifts for and she was cheating on you? Anybody? I have. God has never cheated on me. He's faithful to me. <laughs> Email me. Let me tell you a story about how a girl cheated on me one time. I love for y'all to hear it. It's crazy. We will be known as the life of the community. We're not there yet. That's what we want. We want when schools have a problem, they come to us. Uh, we won't hide behind Sundays. If you come here and Jesus, Jesus, you made the darkness tremble, Jesus. If, y'all, if you're just doing it here, but then y'all, you're scared to talk about him anywhere else, that, that, that's hiding behind Sundays. And where I come from, that's called being a punk. Man, come out the closet, be bold with them. The coworkers that you think may judge you might, might actually be glad that you saved them from a burning hell. Church will be about the other six days. It will be about the other six days. I say this every vision Sunday. This vision, this mission, this purpose is not mine. I stole it. I stole it from Matthew chapter 28. We call it in the church world the Great Commission. I'll just read it. Verse 16, Matthew 28 says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. I just preached this two weeks ago. Jesus had died and resurrected. Now he's showing himself to his crew. He's getting them ready. Um, When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, I love this, all authority in heaven and on earth. I like that he added that part. He didn't want you to get it twisted. You can't escape anywhere you go. All power belongs to God. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And so if I'm Jesus, it seems like it would make sense to say, all right, well, since I got all power, give me your tithes. Uh, Since I got all power, lift your hands right now, doggone it. Since I got all authority, I want you to bless me right now with the fruit of your lips. No, Jesus says, I got all authority. Here's how I'm going to use it. Go. Go, therefore, and make disciples. In other words, go, therefore, and do for other people what I've done for y'all. I let y'all walk with me. I let y'all talk with me. I let y'all become students of mine. So now, Peter, since I let you do it, Peter, you go teach somebody else. Uh, uh, Go make disciples. He didn't say that just to the preacher. It's to all of us. Go create people who follow Jesus Christ of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And my favorite part is this, and remember, I am with you part time. Mm-mm. I'm with you on Sunday morning. At, if you come to the nine, I'm at that one. If you, no, I'm, I'm with you always, always. And then he adds something else to the end of the age. So we don't do this alone. And I know if you're like me, I do share the gospel with people, but I miss opportunities too, Mike. At times I, I should, and I, had, I remember I was in the doctor's office with my mom a few years ago, and God was clearly telling me to share the gospel with another patient there. And, and, and there was a Bible on the table. Some doctor's offices have them. I had a Bible. I was reading it, and I never shared it with her. I, I, I disobeyed. 
I miss that. So let's hold each other accountable. Let's encourage each other. It's nothing like when you share the gospel and you see people respond to it. I have a friend who's not here today, but he and his wife come every week now. Their son's in the NFL, but so they travel during the season. But I grew up with him. We grew up on the same street. I used his house as my sin house. His mom worked second shift. What a perfect house. She ain't here, and, and he knows that, Keith. But I used to share the gospel with him when I got saved at 18. Just kept sharing with him. And now I see him sitting behind me when he's in town pretty much every week. His wife is an evangelist. The gospel works. <laughs> Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil ain't what the gospel is. Oprah ain't what the doctor is. I believe in therapy. I've gone to therapy. I'm going to see a therapist soon. But the gospel sets captives free. (laughs) Man, I used to be a slave to the world. And then I heard the gospel, the naked gospel, that Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth and died for my black self. He died for me. And he rose from death. The Messiah, the anointed one, the holy one, God. People need to know. What are you going to do about it? So here's the homework assignment. It's not on the screen. How does Matthew chapter 28 shape your personal vision? How does it shape your personal vision? How does your everyday look personally? Because if you're doing everything through the factory, you're missing the point. How how does it shape your personal vision? Number two, this one is simple. Who will you disciple? Who will you disciple? Who are you going to teach about Jesus? Who are you going to teach how to follow Jesus? Who are you going to take under your wing? When I see my friend here, man, for years, I would just take him under my wing, and he would respectfully listen. And now, now he lives for the Lord. It's worth it. Who is it? We're going to take communion after we sing uh, with the worship team. Please don't leave. And, and, and before we take communion, if you've got sin that you haven't dealt with, be confessing it and repenting as they sing. Amen. Come on, Factory family. Stand to your feet and worship with us.
I ain't trying to embarrass anybody. I love when I see people worship. You lost in worship. You can, you can keep going. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Um, maybe you're here and you don't know Jesus. Can I offer him to you today? You want to make a decision. I want to follow Jesus today. I want him to be my savior. I do believe what you said, that he came from heaven to earth. He died on a cross as the savior, as the perfect sacrifice, the perfect substitute. He took my place, died for my sin. They put him in a borrowed tomb. On the third day, he rose from death. He's the Messiah. You want to say that I admit that he's God and I want him to be my savior. Is that anybody in the room today? You want him to be your savior? Would you come on down and let me pray for you? We got time. We got time. Would you come? Would you come? Ah, oh, my man, my man, my man, <laughs> my man, <laughs> my man. <laughs> My man. Y'all can do better than that. God in the blessing did. I'm going to pray with you. Anybody else? Anybody else? We got time. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to say, yeah, Lord, I do want to help the poor. I do want to help the least of these. I do want to walk with you. Anybody else? Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Go stand with our youth pastor here, Eric. We're going to pray with you. Let's pray right here. What I want you to do, let's hold hands here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My man. Give me some. Give me some. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Give me a hug. Bless y'all. Come here. I used to have hair like this. What's your name? Tyson. 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 Q. Q? I like that. <laughs> What's your name? I know your name. I'm forgetting it. Jackson. 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 Let me say this. We're not trying to fool y'all. I want y'all to know what you're doing. Look at me, Q. There you go. I ain't fussing now. Uh, but I want y'all to know what you're doing. You're making a decision now to leave your life and to follow Jesus. Are we clear? You want him to be your God. You want a personal relationship with him. You clear? So let's hold hands and we're going to pray. I, 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 I won't hurt your hand. And afterwards, I want y'all to all talk to Eric. So just repeat after me. Say, Father, we come to you because we want to be saved. Father, we believe that you're the Savior, that you're the only Savior. We believe that you came from heaven to earth because you're the Messiah. So, Father, we simply asking you to save us. Father, I'm making a commitment to give you my life, to follow you, to walk with you. Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die for me. Thank you for saving me. Would you empower me with your Holy Spirit so that I can walk with you? In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. What do we do? We celebrate. We celebrate. Give me love again. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. Y'all can do better than that. Give God some praise, man. <laughs> so, 
when we look at this, I guess it's called the wafer. We do realize what this represents, yes, the body of Christ. In Matthew 28, when Jesus came to that mountain, what they saw was a resurrected body. He had been dead before. He was no longer dead. But what had happened days earlier, he had been brutally beaten, uh, slaughtered. They slaughtered him. He was a bloody mess. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They put nails in his hand, nails in his feet, pulled his beard, spat upon him. And so when we look at this, I want you to think about his body and I want you to do this in remembrance of his body that was brutally beaten and he died. Let's thank him and remember. We thank you, Lord. I ain't gonna lie. I love talking about his blood. I do realize if you ain't in the church, it sounds weird talking about blood. <laughs> Christianity is different. We're peculiar people. Uh, I like talking about his blood because without his shed blood, there's no remission of sins. We don't have a chance without sin. Now because of his shed blood, I, I ain't got to worry about fixing myself. He shed his blood. Think about that so that we ain't got to try to fix our issues. Man, we are, that's reason to praise him. So when we partake of this, let's remember he bled for us. Let's remember. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for Jackson, for Q, for Tyson. I thank you for souls. I thank you for souls being saved. I, I thank you, Father. Would you put a hedge of protection around those young men? Would you help them to be difference makers? Would you help them not to be afraid to go out and live for you boldly? Uh, in the name of Jesus, Father, would you help us to walk out the Great Commission and to be a disciple-making people. We love you. We thank you, Father. Thank you for 10 years. Would you, would you be, with here, uh, be here with us next week as we celebrate your faithfulness? Keep us until we meet again, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. You all are dismissed. You all are dismissed. This is my story.